What's going on guys? God bless you. Carlos here with Serrano's Mobile Detail in Dallas, Texas. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, this might be a pretty, not quick video, but hopefully educational, right? Uh, we're going to be working on this uh, Colorado, Chevy Colorado. Uh, we're going to be doing a two-step paint correction. Um, and I got to tell you, uh, after I did the strip wash, the decon wash, the clay, this paint um, is really in bad shape. And you're going to see a couple pictures of how this paint looks. Um, I got to be very honest, when I picked this truck up, I was actually very excited because it didn't look that bad. So I was like, yes, <laughs> it'll be smooth sailing. Uh, but once we did the whole decon and, you know, we did the whole prep work for the paint, um, I am a little bit worried um, that this might not come out as I thought it was. But we're not chasing perfection. All we're doing is we're trying to make this paint look much better. So cross your fingers. I hope we are able to make this paint look better. So in this video, you're going to be watching me go through these steps, right? Uh, how do I tackle jobs like this? right uh, what products i'm gonna use what pads i'm gonna use so stick around and i hope you guys enjoy it all right so for the initial step uh, it's very crucial um, because this is really what's gonna really set the tone for the rest of the project um, i was gonna use my dual or my da um, but really i ended up pulling out the rotary um, we're pulling out the rotary today uh, for this project just because of really the condition of this paint um, is not in great shape. Um, there's a lot of oxidation. There's a lot of scratches, um, which are worrisome to me, to be honest, uh, because um, honestly, when I saw this truck the first time, it it looked good. I, I took it um, because I was like, this is going to be a solid project, you know, um, but I didn't see beyond what was in the paint um i did see some minor some minor scratches and stuff but nothing like obviously once i did the whole um strip wash and all of that like <laughs> everything came to light um and it was more of like an oh crap moment <laughs> um so we um we ended up pulling out the rotary for this one so we're using the max shine um m1000 or m1000 i think it is uh, their rotary with a six inch um, Lake Country wool pad. And for the uh, product, we're using Coach Kemi um, H9 or actually H902, their new one. Um, and we are doing about a speed um, three or four to really warm up this panel really well. Um, when using a rotary, you gotta know what you're doing um, because the last thing you want is really burn through the clear, especially with. Um, the edges these uh, vehicles have <coughs> one minor mistake can cost you thousands of dollars so if you've never used a rotary definitely do not try to use it on a customer's vehicle get you a panel learn how to use the rotary because rotaries i honestly feel like they have a mind of its own if you don't know what you if you don't know what you're doing right uh so we ended up pulling out the rotary uh and as always obviously the uh, i do about maybe two or three passes at a speed four um, at a high velocity in my opinion uh, because I want to heat up this panel really well and uh, with the right products and the right pad I think it's always crucial uh, because it's really going to make a difference in your finish um, so that's what we're starting off with um, is a rotary Lake Country wool pad their purple one with Coach Kemi H902 Throughout the video, the star of this video of everything today, uh, I think would be the Lake Country pad washer. So shout out to this pad washer for doing an amazing job uh, in this project. Um, but the pad washer was a huge um, tool to have in this project. One. I don't have a lot of six inch wool pads. Um, so working clean is key. Um, and having the pad washer uh, really helped me so much today. One, it kept the pad cool. 
um, which in long term, it's gonna give me more uses out of my pad. So I, did, I would do one pass, clean it up, and then keep on going. Cleaning the pad is crucial, um, so you can get the best um, performance on the product and the pad. So uh, if you haven't thought of maybe getting a pad washer, <coughs> definitely get them they are a little bit pricey um but uh in return you're gonna have clean pads always right uh so it's a great tool for those that don't buy a lot of pads i have a lot of pads um but for today for this project the pad washer was very crucial in this job that i was working on All right, we've successfully done the whole uh, first step, which is the heavy cut stage, right? Uh, next up, we're gonna be following it up with a uh, Rupes uh, yellow foam with Coach Kemi F6 on the MacShine M21 um, six inch pad. <coughs> uh, this part here is pretty much, uh, as you start with high heat, we start at a, at a at a nice speed right so uh, this next phase I'm usually about a speed five uh, for this stage and all we're doing now is pretty much we're starting to uh, refine the paint right removing a lot of maybe swirls or holograms that I may have left from the initial cutting stage um, and work it slow uh, the slower you work your machine the better the finish is going to be, right? Uh, I don't use the M21 um, or the 21 millimeter often, um, but for today, I was like, let's use it, right? Um, the beauty of it is you cut your time in half because of the amount of, uh, of coverage that you get for the uh, 15, for the 21 millimeter. Um, so that's what we're using here. Very soft passes and we're starting to really see the results. Now, I did say I was going to do a two-step paint correction. Um, and maybe you're probably wondering like, shouldn't you already be put using like a sealant or something? I'm gonna tell you guys why I ended up not going that route. Uh, the reason I did not do a two-step paint correction was because there was still so many scratches in this paint um, that I decided to end up doing a three-step uh, paint correction. Strictly polishing, no sanding. <clears throat> this was going to give me the best chance to really bring as much uh, gloss and as much as removing a lot of the imperfections that were in the paint, right? So I'm not chasing perfection, but this paint was reading well over I think five mils which was very surprising because this paint was really beat up so when I saw that I was like you know what I'm not gonna charge the customer extra for that and we're gonna go ahead and just add this extra step right um, because I really want to just give the best looking truck back to this customer right um, it was in bad shape and all I can do is just try my best to make it look better so I said to myself, you know what, let's just do an extra step uh, to it. Um, so for this part, um, I ended up using um, the MacShine M8, their eight millimeter throw with a Rupes uh, white finishing pad. And um, I, by now I've done my panel prep and I'm using the Drive Auto Appearance Primer Polish. This is gonna be my sealant. It's gonna give me about nine to 12 months of protection. Um, and some of you guys probably like, man, I would have put it a ceramic coating on there. Sometimes it's not in the customer's budget. Yes, they may be spending a lot of money already, but that doesn't mean that it's in their budget. If it would have been for me, we would have put a 
probably a good solid i would have gone with a five-year ceramic coating just because it's a thicker coating it would help better against the elements but the cost <laughs> would have been tremendously higher so at the end of the day my job as a detailer is to understand um the customer's needs their budget um obviously explaining to them what they were going to getting uh, what they were going to get that way they understand you know the pros and cons right um so we're using the uh, drive auto appearance primer polish um to seal and finish nicely and the beauty with the drive auto appearance why i like it or i love it um i may not showcase it a lot but um, I love it because you can polish, leave it on there for at least 15 minutes. So it gives you time to do this whole truck. And then you come back and just buff it off. And the finish is amazing. The water behavior, once it cures, you have tight beating. Um, so maybe in the future, I'll be able to get this truck back. And maybe we do a ceramic coating, right? Maybe it's in the carts um, in the near future. Who knows? <clears throat> but the initial reason this truck came to me or why I have it is because we were going to do a two-step paint correction. At the end of the day, my job is to deliver the best possible outcome for the customer um, and just hopefully see them smile. So the last step to this was a refined polish to just make this black pop, right? So that's why I ended up not doing a two-step and I switched it over to a three-step uh, paint correction with a heavy cut, with coach kemi fine cut and we sealed it with a more of a just nice polish to give it gloss to give it protection and that pretty much uh concludes um today's video i know it was maybe short but hopefully a little bit of information of what i use i know sometimes a lot of you guys want to know what i use right um results vary right depending on your skill level you will see maybe some imperfections on this paint but like i said I'm, i wasn't chasing perfection i could have wet sanded i know some of you guys are going to say man i i would have wet sanded and i would have done all this but at the end of the day <laughs> it's not in the budget Plus, wet sanding a truck, it's a whole different ballpark, which I can do, but it's a lot of money, right? And I think this is more of an outdoor truck. It looks like they run it through trees and I don't know, right? So will it look like this forever? I don't know. So it's better just to always give the customers kind of what they need, um, they're, set the expectations. Um, and I literally told the customer like, hey, just know that um, maybe not everything is gonna come out so just know and he was like i understand do what you can and that's exactly what we did um you're gonna see a little bit of maybe a video of how it turned out it turned out amazing um the look of this truck drastically changed and i'm very excited to return it back to the customers um but overall the initial um what we did today was or what i did in the past few days was a heavy cut stage we did a fine um, polishing and a refining polish with a sealant um, to make sure this thing is looking good it's looking <coughs> glossy as you guys can see it um, but it's also protected for up to uh, 12 months and a lot of you guys might say like how do you um, guarantee those 9 to 12 months right that's all based off maintenance if the customers don't maintain their freshly corrected vehicle um, the protection is going to diminish right um, so truly the durability is based off what happens after i get it right um, customer was going to hand wash it from here on out so you know i hope that you know this thing stays looking really good um, but if not, I guess they can always call me again and I can take care of it, right? <laughs> Anyways, um, thank you so much uh, for watching today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed a little bit, guys. Um, but as always, God bless you guys and I'm going to catch you guys on the next video.